And joining us on the program this morning is Ottawa's own Nick Scott, who's in studio with us today. And uh, Nick's story appears in this uh, new book. It's called Body by Design by Chris Gethin, and it's a, a very... Uh, unique story and we are extremely uh, pleased that Nick has uh, agreed to come in and, and share his story with us here on KOFO for those who who may not have heard it and uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about some of the things that he's been up to in the last uh, year or so and maybe some of the things coming up in the future so Nick first of all thank you for being here today appreciate you coming in well I really appreciate you taking the time to do this <laughs> not a problem at all I guess I think most people probably know your story but there may be a few out there who don't so maybe kind of start there a little bit and 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 tell us how you got where you are today okay basically um it was august of 98 and i was going um from work to football practice i was 16 at the time and my left front tire blew out and i rolled my vehicle uh, my left front tire blew out i rolled my vehicle five and a half times and i was ejected oh from the driver's side window and my own car hit me in in the back in midair and then basically the doctor's diagnosed me as paraplegic and they would told and, me I would never walk again and this was here in Franklin County was it not yeah I believe it's on um, 68 yeah okay and the doctor said that you would never walk again and this was in 98 you said yeah 98 and then so what happened take us from there a little bit what happened after that basically I um, they life lied me to the KU Medical Center and that's when the doctor basically walked in and told me my football days were over and I would never walk again then I was devastated and I got severely depressed and I asked the Lord why me why did this happen to me and I don't know so many people my family and friends they just supported me so you know amazingly that I wanted to get better for them mm -hmm. so I just focused on being the best that I could be and w wanted to walk again so I went through intensive rehab and eventually got to the point where I started to be able to move my legs again and then one day in rehab I never I just hit me I never looked at myself so I got a I saw a mirror in the dresser next to me and my weight went up to 300 pounds and I was just basically I was just fat and then I grew a mini afro and I had a spotted beard and these bottle cap glasses and from there I just swore to myself I would never look like that again and that's that's the turning point and then you attended Ottawa University, did you not? And you had set yourself a little bit of a goal there by graduation time. Yeah, back in, um, uh, my whole thing was I felt like I didn't have nothing after high school. So I, I focused on walking in and also being a powerlifting, which eventually I became a two-time world powerlifting champion. Mm -hmm. And then, But I graduated in May of 2005 and then eventually walked across the stage without form crutches to get my diploma. So I was kind of like just showing the doctors ha! <laughs> <laughs> take that you guys don't always know everything you profess to know then right that's that's amazing what an incredible story and you talk about uh, the transformation uh, tell us a little bit about that transformation and from what you and I were discussing just a little bit ago it is certainly something that didn't happen overnight it was a process it sounds like no yeah and that's exactly it it is a process because um you know, even with me being the chair, I mean, what type of cardio do I do? I mean, I was literally lost because mm -hmm. I was limited to so many exercises at the time because of my back was still healing. And I just, I felt lost. And there was really nothing out there for me that I felt like. So eventually, I just educated myself and I did a lot of research and I taught myself what I need to do. And I just altered the exercises to fit my needs. And I just did whatever it took to, to make it work. And it wasn't an overnight thing. It took me years to transform my body, but it's really about making a lifestyle. And the same thing with the the steps that he talks about in the transformation in the Body by Design book. I mean, it's really about just making a lifestyle and keep self-motivated to actually achieve your results. You did, just got to stick with it. Did you actually have uh, some sort of help from, from people like Chris when you were going through this process, or did you just kind of stumble on this on your you know work your way through this on your own by trial and error and find out what works and what didn't work and that kind of thing or how did you modify things to fit your situation well it's nobody guided me it basically yeah. was I felt like I had nothing going through after my accident mm -hmm. so I realized if I couldn't do anything the one thing I could be was stronger than everybody so I focused on just being able to bench press as much as I could and then mm -hmm. eventually going back to my first 
bench press competition after my accident. I went from barely lifting anything to after like a year to be able to push up at the competition at 350 pounds on the bench press the wow. school record was 275 so i broke their school record and just dominated everybody so in my mind it was like this is this is the key so that's what i focused on and from that i educated myself to like what can focus on being able to bench more and then I realized I needed to train my entire body so then I got books and I just read a lot and I did research on the internet eventually when that came about and stuff like that but eventually just over the years of just educating myself on forms technique and diet and realized there's in the fitness industry it's not about a magic pill or right. a magic supplement it's about just making a lifestyle because you really gotta do it day in and day out to make it kind of like um, I don't know, just it's like a lifestyle. Right. Now you've written your own book as as well, have you not? Yes. Tell us a little bit about that and and uh, how that's been doing. Well, uh, it's uh, I wrote that after my um, a publisher approached me after I graduated um, from OU and they uh -huh. said it, you know that he would publish and stuff so i was like wow i was like i'm not i'm not a good writer and stuff and i was so paranoid because english was my worst thing so i was like what do i need to write about and it's like how long and this and that and oh he's like just write he's like there would be editors to help you know make sure your grammar's right and stuff like that so uh -huh. i took a year out of my life and i wrote my book and eventually after that he backed out on me basically oh my yeah so basically he told me that um you know he had his wife edit the book and that just paranoid me more and then eventually he said the book's good enough as is we'll just make it an audio thing so that just f made me furious because it took all this time so i didn't do nothing with it so eventually um uh the spring of 2009 i was like oh i want my book to be finished so i basically google stuff on the internet and i found like a company to help self-edit my book just to rephrase like the grammar to make sure the colons is there sure so, so i don't sound stupid in the book <laughs> <laughs> but then i just had it self-published and did it my own and you know that's basically it what's the response been on it oh everybody's amazed with it because it's really about i talked really about in depth about my ex and the personal stuff and it was mm -hmm. it's just the the things that you really don't know about until you go through something that situation and when I was writing it, I really focused on thinking about the families and the ones who are actually going through the same situations. So if they're really struggling, uh, that way they felt like when they're reading this that there's somebody else out there that they can have guidance for. Right. How many copies of the book have you sold? Do you have any idea at all on that? Oh, geez, probably about six, seven hundred. Wow, that's great. Now, tell me a little bit.